Good morning, Carolina. I'm Calista Pushman. And I'm Will Cronsmith. Welcome back to an eighth week of Carolina calendar on April 8th, which honestly feels like the eighth day of the week. Anyway, we're still here. And we will be here every week keeping you up to date on what's happening on the USC campus and around Columbia. This week on the show, a love story for the ages meets an ages old theater. And the Columbia entertainment scene moves from a feline monarch to a cool cat on the stage. And later, mix adrenaline-laced college kids with a slimy fountain and put a camera in their face. What could go wrong? Good morning, Calista. Now, I'm getting major Taylor Swift love story vibes from this morning. What about you? Oh, I, love is in the air with Romeo and Juliet. The story of star-crossed lovers is going to be at Long Street tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday through Friday. Now, tickets are $15 for students and $22 for the general public. Also, a new twist on the classic and Juliet um, is also set to premiere in Canada this year, focusing on her perspective, which is really, really exciting. I mean, it's always fun seeing so many um, stories come out of such a classic. Absolutely. I, I, what's really cool about Anne Juliet is it kind of looks at it as if, like, if Juliet doesn't die, and then, like, what happens? Which I think is so interesting mm -hmm. because, I don't know, maybe as a cynical young child, maybe this was just me, but I read it and I was like, why are they doing this? No, it was silly. It was, they could have just like waited like another like five minutes, maybe like call for some help, maybe like check the vital. Like I did, I know it's a different time, but like it just felt wrong. It's a little, I mean, never I know mind, it's a drama. It was just dramatic. Never mind anything that felt wrong with their relationship before. Everything Wait, about they're, the they're death like scene. They're like 14, they're like, they're little babies. Like it, it was just not it. So I'm excited to see what Anne Juliet brings to this, well, to the stage. Uh, moving from something that's unnecessarily dramatic to something that's completely necessarily funny, the stand-up comedian Cat Williams is coming to Columbia tomorrow. He's going to be at Colonial Life Arena down the street at 8 p.m. Saturday night, and this is part of his World War III tour. Calista, I can't get enough of Cat Williams. I'm a big stand-up comedian person, but he's honestly one of the funniest. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, and it's really exciting to see it. Coming so close to our campus, it's just an awesome opportunity. Absolutely, I went to, I know last time we talked about a stand-up uh, stand show on this show, I actually went, I didn't know it at the time that I was gonna go, but I saw Eliza Schlesinger on her comeback tour and that was really fantastic, so I'm excited to see what Cal Williams brings. Yeah, our show has not steered you wrong and I hope it hasn't steered the audience wrong. Um, but there are more events happening on campus close to us. Uh, Carolina Productions welcomes Lauren Light and Bull Street Garage on Tuesday, April 12th for Lunchbox on the Patio. It will be from 12 to 2 on, you guessed it, Russell House Patio. Um, the opener, Bull Street Garage, hails from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. And if you don't know, is named after literally a parking garage here on campus. And I just think that's hilarious. Or is the parking garage named after them, Calista? That's a very, very good question. Because they they've, they've gotten quite like the iconic status here on campus. I mean, a lot of their buzz, aside from their talent, has really just come from their name. People are just curious and be like, I wonder what, what they have. Absolutely. And our, our sister organization, WSC, did a great interview with them. I know that they've kind of been making the rounds around uh, USC student media. So we're going to be hearing from them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then elsewhere in the music scene around Columbia, actually the same place just a few days later, uh, at about 11 a.m. next Friday, a week from now, the Office of Multicultural Affairs and Gamecock Entertainment are hosting Pride Cella on the Russell House patio. Quote from them, enjoy a festival featuring music, performances, art, and celebrating a rich history of community, hardships, progress, and growth. Uh, growth excuse me. Uh, Calista, I really hope that this event is everything that it could be, because I think it's an amazing opportunity on a college campus to have a, a little bit of a, a miniature pride Coachella. Yeah, it's definitely something that hits close to home, and it's really great seeing campus really embrace this community and celebrate it. Very Absolutely. exciting stuff. I mean, the Office of Multicultural Affairs has done a lot of really cool stuff. I know I went through um, Safe Zone training with those cute little, I don't know if you've seen them, they're diamond-shaped uh, rainbow stickers, but the training program was really cool, um, and I think we're continuing to grow as a campus. Um, it, it's harder in a state like South Carolina, but uh, I'm really excited to see where our campus is going with, you know, continuing to understand gender identity and, and sexuality as a spectrum, and I'm glad that we're really celebrating diverse perspectives on this campus. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful for what the university has done to really just make everyone feel welcome. Now, coming up, we're talking about a crazy week in Colombia that included a championship, a near tornado, and slime. 
Welcome back. As you can see, Calista and I are, are pretty spirited this morning. That's because the South Carolina Gamecocks women's basketball team claimed a championship over the weekend. The real story was the fans. Well, let's just take a look. The South Carolina women's basketball team claimed the national championship last night, and rowdy fan reaction followed not too far behind. It all started with a watch party inside of the Russell House, before students rushed to the Thomas Cooper Library to celebrate. What is normally a very quiet, peaceful pond quickly turned into a pool for hundreds, if not thousands, of U of SC students. Many left behind shoes and personal items to join in on the celebration, but they say it was all worth it. You're queens, you represent that women's sports matter, and if you look here, you couldn't tell if a man or a woman won, and that's all that matters. The fun did not stop there, as garnet and black fireworks lit the night sky. Even the band got in on the fun. But the overall message to Dawn Staley and the women's basketball team was love, and deep admiration. We're a women's basketball yeah. school. We we're proud of it. Like, and we're proud of it. We had the best oh, coach. Alabama and Clemson. The also, like, schools. it makes it even better that our coach just won a gold medal too. Like, yeah, gold medal in the Olympic Games with the so world. So I think it's even better we win in women's than men's because the future is female. The future is female. Though high expectations did remain for the future. Not one, not two, not three, not four, at least five. For SGTV News for Sports, I'm Will Crownsburg. Yeah, Costa, it was just really fun to see everybody obviously jumping in the fountain, which I think was kind of gross, but also super interesting. And as student journalists, it made for a really interesting story, so I'm not mad. Actually, it was amazing. Yeah, no, it was definitely quite, an, it, was, it was an evening and a half, um, to say the least. I mean, as someone, who, as someone who jumped into the fountain, it was a slimy blur. Um, as someone who jumped into the fountain, like, I know that it's like, it's, it's like three feet deep, but I kind of like, I don't know, I forget that I'm short, and I was like, oh, I can like jump in, and like, I won't get like sucked in, because I was like, I'm not going to get, I was like wearing like biker shorts, so I was like, okay, mm. I'm not going to get my pants wet. I took my shoes off, I was like, this can't be that bad. I like fully jumped, and it split costing like I don't think I just I don't know I feel like it's all of the excitement that we all got swept into we forgot how absolutely rancid that fountain is the pollen the, there was a dead frog in it in the morning a dead frog I just okay but hear me know. out I was walking around carrying a camera mm-hmm just I mean I really wasn't even telling people to say things I was just walking around with the camera I mean I was bombarded with people saying go Cox about 30 times, mm -hmm. uh, a pasta sauce recipe. I mean, come on. It was, the night was everywhere, and I just, I don't know, it was such a special energy, like, walking through the fountain just and just seeing, like, people getting, like, thrown on. There were dogs in there. It was just, like, it was such a weird, awesome bonding experience. Um, and definitely, as you can see from that full video, like, everyone was one that night. It was awesome. Well, I've been telling our viewers on this show to watch the women's basketball team for the past like month and mm -hmm. I think it finally paid off so yeah I mean did they only have two losses the whole season and were they the number one overall seed and then and the number one ranked team the whole season and was it kind of obvious that they were amazing yes but I'm gonna take credit for telling people <laughs> to watch them uh, and then obviously for what happened uh, afterwards and that amazing celebration and then they have a parade, a parade coming up next week too so the party really doesn't stop with this team oh yeah it's definitely a celebration that's like it's worth this long a period of time to be like hyping everything up and I mean it wasn't just Tiku Fountain that was hype I mean they were I it think any everywhere. any fountain Green I Street. think had people hop in it was wild five points yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well anyway after that great celebration a look at what you can expect from your Columbia weather the rest of the week right after this And we're back, and better than ever? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spring is definitely here, and if not for the heat, the pollen has at least gotten the best of us. Just about everyone in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. Now, this week's highs start off in the 60s before touching the 70s and zooming to 80 starting on Tuesday. As for the precipitation, we just we just be dry through at least Thursday, and hopefully no tornadoes this time around. And with the days heating up, my focus has now shifted to staying inside. So let's pivot to Will and Calista <laughs> each talk about one thing. And for me, 
That's sitcoms. Now, everybody loves streaming. I mean, Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max. The list goes on. But I'm a big fan of a network sitcom. I know I mentioned to you before the show that I was watching Abbott Elementary when I fell asleep last night. That's an amazing show. I've been watching Mr. Mayor and a show called American Auto, which are both on NBC. And then I also watch How I Met Your Father, which is on Hulu, but it's a spinoff of a CBS sitcom, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. It counts. Uh, it's also not as good as How I Met Your Mother, spoiler alert. But I just really like the feel of watching like a quick like 30 minute sitcom, just something that really makes me feel I don't know, it just makes me laugh. It's really lighthearted, and I know that's not for everybody, but I'm just, a, I'm just a big fan. No, definitely a lot of people, especially just like thinking about like our age group with mm. a lot of older sitcoms going on to these streaming services. I feel like all of these shows have just become like comfort shows. Like it's like the equivalent of like putting on a warm blanket when I turn on Parks and Rec. Mm. Like it's, it's awesome. It's wonderful. Uh, yeah, my older brother, who's a, an even bigger sitcom person than I am started a bracket, like a March Madness style bracket for the top 64 sitcoms of all time. So he took four, or he took 16 from each of four different eras over the last 60 or 70 years. Uh, I, I mean, I preferred the most recent uh, quarter of the bracket, uh, but they were all super fun to watch. I mean, I've probably seen out of those 60, I'd probably seen a decent amount of at least 20 or 30 of them, which mm -hmm. is super fun. I mean, we're talking Full House and Friends and obviously Parks and Rec mm -hmm. and The Office. Um, Modern Family, I think, was in there. Married with Children is another really good one that comes to mind that was a little bit older. So I just, I don't know, I just really like watching TV. And if that makes me lazy, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It makes you appreciative of media, which is mm -hmm. the career we're going into. I mean, so it makes sense. It's perfect. It's yeah. fair. It's fair. All right. To pivot a little bit onto my, I guess, section of the mm -hmm. segment. Um, as of recent, I've been like, I've been on the Zodiac sign, like, wave. Like, I I wouldn't call myself an expert by any means. Like, a lot of it is, like, ironic. Like, mm -hmm. I'll, like, my stepdad, um, he's a Leo, and he doesn't care for, like, any of, like, the Zodiac sign things. But, like, what I love about it is he could do, like, anything. He'd, like, be doing the dishes, and I'll be like, oh, my God, you're being such a Leo. And he gets so, like, weirded out by it, or he's like, what do you mean? And it's like... It's all the mind games, but no, it's been very fun. We've been talking like throughout the station, throughout our leadership team, um, about whose sign is what and like how it like makes sense and how they're like leading their jobs. I personally am an Aquarius. She's an Aquarium. If you could, if you couldn't tell, um, I'm like quirky and different. Um, and Will over here is a Capricorn. Lame. She goes. I'm an Aquarius. If you couldn't tell, what does that mean? I don't know. My bigger point here is, uh, last night, I was saying something about, I don't know, just a normal part of my life. And not only Callista, but our news director, Zane, as well as our PR director, Cal uh, excuse me, our PR director, Alona, say something to the degree of, oh, that's such a Capricorn thing. What does that mean? It's so fun. We don't even know what it means half the time. It's just so fun. Is it I also just to like, say something? Is it just to justify it is. the coincidences it's of the awesome. world? It's awesome. Also, if another another section of this, um, there's this app called CoStar. I don't know I've if I forced it. you onto it. Okay. I've heard about I it. I love forcing people onto it. Like, even people that are they're just like, oh my God, Zodiac sounds so stupid. Astrology is so dumb. And this is the most fun app ever because it gives you, the best part is like a list of do's and don'ts and it's like three words. And it'll be like, do, motorcycle, Gaslight, coffee cup, and then it'll be like, don't like mirrors, polo t-shirt. Is that, is like, that it's where like, Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss came from? I think so. I think so. I don't know. It's all everything has a, is rooted in something, and I think that it's that. Um, it's so rooted in what? I don't know. It's rooted in me being an Aquarius. You guys wouldn't understand because you know, quirky and different. I mean, I'm losing my mind. All oh my of the God. astrology words, they they sound weird, like aquarium and scorpion. I don't... I'm going to throw a shoe at you. We're uh, gonna, let's wrap this up. I'm over this. All right, all right, we'll, all right. We'll wrap this here. up. With that, we wrap up Carolina Calendar for today, April 8th, 2022. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. And keep up with all of our content. Be sure to visit us online at SGTVonline.com. For SGTV News 4, I'm Will Kronzberg. And I'm Callista Pushman. Now, from all of us here at SGTV, have a great weekend, Carolina, forever to be.